I think it's going to be a, a hearing and a good opportunity for these CEOs to have a great discussion with this committee about the state of the financial services industry, uh, the state of their own institutions, the big improvements that have occurred since the crisis, and the way that they're serving their customers, uh, the, the large companies, the small companies, and individual consumers, uh, millions of them around the country. So I think it's going to be a great opportunity to have this discussion to see where we've been and, and where, how we're going forward. You did uh, send out, I, I guess, a, a memo to stakeholders. It was entitled, uh, Big Banks Help America Do Big Things. Looks like the, uh, the Washington Examiner is the only place that would publish this, I guess. Uh, that's not surprising. Well, these institutions are uh, responsible for almost half the lending, uh, consumer lending, uh, commercial and industrial lending, three quarters of the capital markets, uh, their underwriting and debt and equity offerings, and they're very significant for the capital markets and for the growth of the economy. And so those are, those are Im important issues that the committee should take stock of. And frankly, uh, the lawmakers and regulators and the institutions themselves have helped lead the way towards where we are now, where we have this um, incredibly strong system. And, uh, and you need this system, and you need these institutions for this economy. There was a group, I'm not sure, I, I, don't, I don't know the group well, but uh, they sent something out that, uh, and your, uh, your response was there was a gross mischaracterization of the character of the nation's largest banks and the health of the nation's largest banks in, a, in an attempt to politicize a serious hearing. So what, what, what was there, uh, what was the gross mis mischaracterization and how was it mischaracterized? So th this particular report described the various types of government support that came forward during the crisis. And uh, it included direct support for institutions. As you know, there were around, around 700 institutions, banks that took uh, TARP funds, for example. All of that was returned. Those investments came back to the government with a very significant um, uh, appreciation and profit. There were a number of other facilities that weren't, were not intended to do, uh, to provide support directly for the banks, but actually support um, you know, the asset classes uh, and the economy as a whole. And those things channeled through the banking system, but, uh, but, I, but it was a mischaracterization to, 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 declare the, to declare that type of assistance in those particular programs as uh, directly supporting banks. Uh, it was more about making sure that this economy uh, was, uh, was, was healthy and strong to mitigate financial panic and to minimize damage to the economy at that time. Kevin, the most recent bank CEO to go in front of the House Financial Services Committee under Democratic control was Tim Sloan, the former CEO of Wells Fargo. How much is that uh, a blueprint of what bank CEOs should and should not do and what they should and should not expect? There were some contentious um, exchanges between, for instance, Sloan and uh, Ocasio-Cortez. So how much has that been a post-mortem ahead of the, these hearings today? My view is that you have 60 members of this committee, all have different views, different priorities, and uh, this is an appropriate time for them to bring those views forward, to ask questions of these industry leaders about the way that they run their institutions. and. It, it's, it's very typical. This is a very typical environment. It's really business as usual. I think all of these industry leaders, even though many of them have not testified before, have, have prepared carefully and have uh, important things to, to tell these members about the way that they run their institutions and the, and the system, uh, the strength of the system as it is right now. So I think they will be uh, responsive to constructive questions, and they will answer them to the best of their right. ability. Do you think Tim Sloan made, made mistakes in that hearing? Do you think that's what ultimately resulted in his um, retirement or resignation? I think he handled himself extremely well. Uh, he was composed. He responded to the questions. He gave direct answers. Uh, I, I, I believe his, uh, his appearance before the committee was, uh, was, was quite strong, as a matter of fact. So you don't, you don't think that that performance ultimately led in any way to the uh, to, to his to his leaving the company and, and to this idea that regulators and Washington uh, ultimately didn't have confidence in him I think he 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 answered the committee's questions he spent hours before the committee he uh, he was he was very yeah. polite and he was uh, you know he, he expressed himself very genuinely uh, on behalf of his company and himself um, 
I, I, do you think we need a non-bank uh, individual to take over for Wells Fargo? Does that? I guess you would not necessarily think uh, that that was Warren Buffett's idea. Um, but I think it had not. It, he wasn't impugning banks. I think he just said it might be easier to deal with regulators. Is that where we are now in the world? I would I would imagine that the board is going to is going to consider a, a diverse slate of candidates uh, for that position. Right. And, and and that's what I would expect them to do. Hey, Kevin, how are you advising uh, the CEOs uh, to speak today uh, on the issue uh, of guns? I know it's an issue that I imagine is going to come up today because of uh, the, the stances that Bank of America and Citigroup did take. Explain how, you know, their companies, um, you know, uh, uh, make decisions around the customers that they serve. They do this every single day. Uh, they, make, they make judgments based on creditworthiness, uh, reputation risk. Uh, they take into consideration, obviously, the sentiments and the views of all of their customers, their employees, and other stakeholders. That's, that is their responsibility, um, they and their management. So I, I, I would expect that they're just going to artic articulate uh, you know, how, how they view their customers and how they uh, address, understand, and serve their customers. Kevin, you're so diplomatic uh, <laughs> in describing how the CEOs are going to respond to questions. I mean, it's it's really amazing. We get we we just played a tape of Maxine Waters sparring with the Treasury Secretary yesterday. You don't think that the environment has changed for these bank CEOs when they go in front of the House Financial Services Committee, which is now controlled by Democrats? Are we entering for banks a more treacherous period in Washington? I think the commentary. Uh, around these institutions has to change. It needs to change. It needs to match the condition of these institutions. It needs to match the condition of this financial system, with it, which is extremely strong. Don't take it from me. Take it from former and current regulators. That is the state that we're in right now. And I think the commentary needs to get closer to that reality. I do think there are going to be members that ask specific questions about issues, and they may be pointed in the way they do that. That, you know, that, that, that is not atypical for a hearing. Yesterday's situation, a little bit more atypical, I would say, but I don't expect that kind of dynamic in this hearing. Do you, are you, is it a positive, the Fed's move to ease uh, how often the living wills are, or, you know, how often we look at, at that? Is that? Is that a positive? Is that something you were lobbying for? I think, I think it is a natural uh, outgrowth of the experience that these institutions have had over the last several years. You go back and look at the the rigorous nature of the work that they do. The, 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 these living wills are elaborate, very detailed roadmaps, and the firms have become increasingly good at performing that exercise and demonstrating that to the regulators, and that's why the regulators are going in this direction. The same holds for stress tests. The experience of the stress testing has demonstrated to the regulators that these institutions and their capital planning processes are, are fundamentally better than they were during the crisis. So I think that's what this reflects.